Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In this video, we're going to continue with our first person shooter by setting up a leaderboard system that keeps track of how many kills you make and how many times you die. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so we're going to start off with the easy part, which is just setting up the leaderboards to display the kills and the deaths. And then we'll take a look at the harder part, which is keeping track of when a player kills someone and when that other person dies. All right, so to start off with the leaderboards, we're going to start with a function. So we'll say local function. The name of our function is going to be on player join. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass the parameter player. And then we're going to connect this function to the player added event by saying game dot players dot player added. So this gets triggered whenever a player joins the game. We're going to say colon connect. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to connect the function, which is on player join. So now inside this function, we're going to set up a folder for the leader stats. So we'll say local leader stats. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. We're going to be creating a new folder. We're going to give this folder a name by saying leader stats dot name. And we'll just set this equal to leader stats inside of quotation marks. Then we're going to say leader stats dot parent. And we're going to set the parent equal to the player. After that, we're going to create the two different values that we're going to display. So one of those is going to be the kills and the other is going to be the deaths. So to start with the kills, we'll say local kills. It's going to be equal to instance dot new. This time we're going to be creating an int value, so that'll be a number. We're going to say kills dot name will be equal to kills. Kills dot value will be equal to zero. And then kills dot parent will be equal to the folder, which is leader stats. Next, we're going to say local deaths. And it's going to be equal to instance dot new. We're going to be creating another int value. We'll say deaths dot name. It's going to be equal to deaths. We'll set the value and also the parent. Okay, and that's all we have to do to set up the leader stats that's going to display the value for kills and also deaths. So let's go ahead and check it out just to make sure it's set up correctly. Okay, and everything looks good. Up in the leader stats, I have a section for the kills and also a section for the deaths. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the part that's a little bit more tricky, which is keeping track of when a player kills someone and when the other player dies. So on the leaderboard script, we're going to create a section that's going to keep track of when a player dies in the game. So just to make this clear, we're going to make a comment that says death tracker. And then we're going to start with the player added event, just like we did right here. So we're going to start by saying game dot players dot player added colon connect. And this time I'm going to define the function inside the parentheses by saying function. We're going to pass that same player variable. And then inside this function, we're going to be creating a couple smaller functions. For the first one, we're going to say player dot character added. So this happens when the character gets added to the player. We're going to connect this. Inside the parentheses, we'll say function. Inside this function, we're going to pass the parameter character. So just like player came from the player added event, character comes from the character added event. So inside this one, what we're going to do is start with character, colon, wait for child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put humanoid. So it's waiting for the humanoid object to load in. From here, we're going to say dot died. So this is when the humanoid dies. We're going to connect this with our final function. This function is not going to get any parameters, but what we're going to do inside of this is we're going to say player dot leader stats dot deaths 
After that, we're going to say dot value. And this is going to be equal to the original value for it. And then we're going to say plus one at the end. All right, so this part is not too bad. And I actually did a video very similar to this. So all this is doing, it's waiting for the player to join the game. It's waiting for the character to load in. From the character, it's waiting for the humanoid to load in. And then after that, it's just waiting for the player to die. When that player dies, it's going to access the deaths part of the leader stats and add one to it. So let's go and load up a local server and we can check to see if this is working. So currently I'm player one. So if I kill this other player, I should expect for player two that for the deaths part of the leader stats, it should go up by one. Okay, and it looks like it works. So the part that's a little bit tricky is we need to figure out who killed that player so that we can add one for the kills in that player's leader stats. The way we're going to do that is very similar to the way we did the attacker tag for the bullet. We're going to create a killer tag that will store with the player being killed. And then we'll use that information to give a kill to the player that killed that other player. So I know that was a mouthful, so let's just go and start working on it. And then it's going to become more clear. So we're going to say local killer is going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to be creating a string value. We're going to say killer dot name is equal to killer. And then finally, we'll say killer dot parent. And this is going to be equal to the player. All right, so before we get too much farther, I just want to run the code and check to make sure this part is working. Okay, so I'm going to check under the player section. And then for the player, so I have my killer tag. Right now, the value section is empty. But what I want to do is update that section with the name of the player that is shooting you. To do that, we're going to revisit the damage script. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple more lines that's going to update that value section with the player's name. First, we need to get the player's name. So we're going to start by saying local player is equal to game dot players. And then we're going to say colon find first child. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put humanoid dot parent dot name to make sure we found it we're going to say if player then what we're going to do next is locate the killer tag within the player so we'll say local tag is equal to player colon find first child and then here we're looking for the name of the tag which is killer Then we want to check to make sure we found the tag. So we'll say if tag, then. The reason we're doing all these extra checks is just to make sure the script doesn't break. Okay, so inside this if statement, we want to update the value for the tag. So we're going to say tag dot value. And this is going to be equal to bullet dot attacker dot value. So remember from before, we added a attacker value to the bullet that stores the name of the player that's shooting the bullet. So what we're doing here is we're updating the killer tag with the name of the attacker. So what we're going to do before we actually run the script is I'm going to lower the damage down so that we can just make sure that the value is getting updated. So for the damage, I'm just going to make it 10. So now let me go ahead and shoot player 2, and we'll see if my name pops up. Okay, and there we go. So for the value part for this tag, we have player one, which is the player that shot player two. Okay, so now we're back under the leaderboard script, which we have in the server script service. And what we're gonna do is we're going to use that killer tag to update the kill section for the killer. To do that, we first need to create a variable for the killer. And we're gonna do that by saying local killer. And this is gonna be equal to game dot players. Inside the players folder, we're gonna say find first child. And then what we're looking for is we're going to start with the player who died. We're going to locate their killer tag. And then we're going to get the value from it. And then we'll say if killer. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say killer. And I actually don't want to use the same variable name as I used up here. So what I'm going to do instead is just add the word tag to this. And then we'll put tag here. And then we'll put tag here. So here, the killer tag, we're going to say dot leader stats, dot kills, dot value. And that's going to be equal to the original value for it. 
and then we'll add plus one at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and run the game and see if this works. All right, so just like before, I'm player one. So what I'm checking for when I kill this other player is that for player two, the deaths go up by one, and for player one, the kills go up by one. All right, so let's go ahead and check it out and make sure it's working. All right, so everything looks good. I got one kill for player one, and then for player two, they have a death. So let's go ahead and swap roles now. So I'm going to become player two. And then we'll go ahead and kill player one. Okay, and that worked as well. So player two now has one kill, and then player one has one death. All right, so before we end with this video, we're just going to do a couple small things just to clean things up a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is go under the damage script. And after the bullet has hit the player, we're going to go ahead and destroy the bullet by saying bullet, colon, and destroy. And the other line that we're going to add is going to be under bullet create. And down here toward the end, what we're going to say is game, colon, get service. The service that we're going to be getting is debris. And then we're going to say colon, add item. We're going to be adding the bullet. And we want to clean these up after two seconds. So debris is kind of like a garbage cleanup system. So whatever items you add to it, like the bullets we're adding right here, it's going to remove all those bullets after two seconds. You can play around with the time of this if you want to. I wouldn't recommend making it too small because then you might remove the bullet before it actually hits the player. So now when you're in the game and you shoot the bullets, you'll see that they pop up in the workspace, but then after two seconds, they get removed. So it's just a nice way of keeping things clean so you don't have a bunch of random parts in your game. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. If you have any other ideas of what you want to see for our first-person shooter series, go ahead and leave me a comment. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.